what is up guys welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is Jacques Smith and I'm busy building this E36 328i into a full-on race car it's been a massive journey so far but we're getting very very close so it is a new week it's probably been a few weeks now and uh, we've got the pistons back so I issued the guys with the drawing the original company I was going to use uh, couldn't do it. They recommended someone else or they would just take too long to set up the tooling. Doesn't matter. We've got it done. So we've pocketed the pistons and then also taken two mils off of the deck like we mentioned. So they're looking good. So what I've done already is I've installed one of the pistons on the rods and put it in. We are going to pre-assemble the whole timing chain system with the sprockets and we need to basically get the, the engine into its cam timing position um, so that we can check the valve clearances against the piston. We've pocketed them now based on calculations we've done. Now we need to see what the actual clearance is. So there's a whole procedure to that and we're going to go through that today. If everything is good and the clearances are fine, we can take the pistons, the rods, the crank, front pulley, clutch assembly, and send it off for balancing. Once that comes back, we can assemble this motor, and then there is nothing holding us up. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna wrap up this video by finishing the clearance checking and making sure we're all good. So let's get stuck into it. So this is the drawing I made for the for the machining house, <laughs> engineering company. It's just to show them basically how much to take off the top of the piston. So they've done that machining work and then they've pocketed the pistons for us. So again, we're just pre-assembling this. All this stuff is loose. So obviously we've got to, there's two dowels, which we should be going onto those two dowel pins. Right, so what I'm doing here is I am just putting some oil on the bottom and in between the head bolts and the washers. This just provides some lubrication um, to stop it from galling or seizing when you're bolting it down to give you a more accurate torque value. Now when we go to assemble the motor we will use ARP uh, Ultra Torque Lube. This is obviously, these are not the head bolts we're going to use. Um, these are the, the old head bolts, but we're just using this for this pre-assembly. Okay, so we're going a bit forwards and backwards. I forgot to put the press stick on, so uh, let's do that. So the way we do this, and there's hundreds of videos of, uh, doing, of how to do this on YouTube, but basically uh, we're going to put press stick into the piston pockets and pre-assemble the motor, set the, the timing and everything, and then um, basically rotate it a couple of times so that the, vowel, uh, the piston comes up and you have that overlap effect and then um, we'll take it all apart and then we should see the, the valve will squash, squash the press stick down we'll cut it open and see what the clearance is so you can use play-doh in this case I'm just going to use press stick, plastic I bought this press stick years ago and then we'll do on the exhaust valve side as well So, what we're going to do now is going to put some oil onto the top of the press stick. That's to stop it from um, sticking to the cylinder head. At least this is nice and light. <laughs> Good. I'm hoping we can get all of these in. Oh, there we go. And that ain't that something. Let's just give these two a whirl. 
So you'll see by the end of this how much work goes into setting up an engine. So when your engine builder tells you it costs X amount for labor, don't try and skimp him on the price because there is an excessive amount of work that goes into building these engines, so, or any engine at least. So be, be respectful of that because the hours it takes. I know I've built many engines. It takes a long time. Yeah! This is the 26 year old factory chain, which we are not going to use. The intake sprocket tile. Uh, this and the S54. They were brilliant motors. As the, ge as the generations moved on though, they started to pick up those issues with the main bearings and the big ends. But this is an absolutely stellar engine. This is the M52 version, even the M54 is good, uh, but the M52, the S52, the M3 version of this, beautiful. Hang on. Ah, I must make sure it's a TDC. So that's where this contraction comes in. So we've just put on this front cover. So now we're putting on the crank pulley. This is so we can line up the mark here. Let's go! There we go. That is in theory TDC. Now we must put in this sprocketile. Perfect. So we're just putting all the guides in. I got all this info on the assembly from Hans Garage on YouTube. I'll, I'll put a link in the uh, description. Thank you, Han. It uh, is helping us. He also uh, he's got a cool thing on the um, Venus rebuild, which we're going to do. I've got the seals now. So these are all new bits we're putting in. All these guards are new. Okay, so we're gonna install the intake cam goodies. So this is obviously not final installation. We'll make sure everything is good on final installation. This is just a pre-assembly. Now we're installing the cam chain. Now this is going to take some wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So apparently we need to get these in terms of the orientation. Something like that where these two arrows are kind of pointing like that and I'm not sure what they're supposed to line up with but uh, these slots I believe need to be in the middle I'll just double check that yeah okay so that's that and now we're gonna come to the fun bit where I'm not really sure how we're gonna get this done and that's getting this whole thing engaged. So um, I'm gonna need to figure this out. All right, so what we're gonna do, is we're gonna do this in a bit of a different way. Um, we're going to use this angle finder that I have for a smart camber tool. And we're gonna use it on the back of the camshaft. The cam supplier has indicated we need to advance the cam five degrees for its base setting, okay, uh, sorry, four degrees, for its base setting, that's the intake cam. 
Then what we need to do is we also have to account for the venos. So the venos advances the cam 12 degrees. So that gives us a total of 16 degrees we need to um, set the intake cam to so that when we rotate it, because in its um, um, fully advanced position with the Venos on, it's going to be at 16 degrees because of the initial 4 degrees we give it. Therefore, we need to set it there now, do the rotations to see that we have the correct clearance, valve to piston clearance. So we're going to do that now. So we add TDC. Now we're going to use the back of the cam as our zero and our angle finder is giving us about 5.2 degrees. So now I've got to keep this flat on the cam and then rotate the cam. So as we rotate the cam, so it started at 5, it went down to 0, so that's already 5 degrees it's given us. So we want 16, so that means we're looking for a number of 11. So I think we'll lock it in there. So that's a total of 16 degrees. So that's the four degrees advance the, the camshaft supplier asks for and the 12 degrees for the Venos uh, actuation. So when it's, the Venos is actuated and the engine's spinning like mad, that's where we should be in theory. <laughs> so now what we need to do is lock in the cam so I'm going to use the Venos tool and hopefully we can lock it in. It's going to rotate the cam so the Venos can get in. Okay, so it's given us more. So we actually need to perhaps go back a bit to go. Yeah. So that's our position. Now the cam is locked, everything's locked. Now we should be able to turn the engine to full rotations and hopefully nothing hits anything. Let's do that. So I'm just going to go really gently and if I feel something stop, if I feel a dead stop, stop completely because that will be the valve touching the piston. Um, what we can do, alright here we go. Everything is turning the way it should. So the exhaust is going to come down to open. So that was your firing stroke. So now the piston is going down in its firing stroke. We'll hit bottom dead center here soon, which it is now. Now it starts coming up. The exhaust valve is opening. So this is in theory, at, when it comes to the top now, this is more or less when uh, they should touch. So, as you see the screwdriver come up. There we go. Okay. So there was no touch. So now this is in theory, this is when the spark plug is igniting that's going to push the piston down now the heat expansion pushes the piston down it hits the uh, gets to the bottom of the stroke as it starts coming up the exhaust valve opens it's now pushing all of the exhaust gas out it comes to, top to, to the top and now the in, inlet valves are going to open. This is in theory when it will touch. If it is touching, <sighs> the inlet valves are opening. Now it's sucking air and fuel into the combustion chamber. Inlet valves close and now it's coming up to its compression stroke. Back to the top dead center. And Bob's your brother's auntie's cousin. So in theory, nothing touched because it would have stopped it would have been a fast hard stop so nothing touched we can now take it all apart again and uh, see what the clearance is so let's do that okay one two six exhaust valves didn't even touch 
didn't take Valves did. I think we pocketed these things way too much. Can you see here where the valve touched the the press stick? So it definitely changed the shape of the press stick, but I think we've got plenty. So what I'm trying to do, that's plenty. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Unfortunately, I had a technical issue and uh, we couldn't get the last bit of the video, but ultimately we kind of just wrapped up the, uh, the clearances and it came within two mils, which is plenty clearance. We do sometimes run it closer, but um, for this application, it's absolutely perfect. In the next few episodes, we're actually gonna build the engine and try and get it into this puppy. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and uh, appreciate all the support. Please keep it up and we'll see you guys next time. Ciao.